Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Income Gaming, Cheltenham's premier friendly local game store. Check the link in the description. Octon Panzer has now arrived, and if you're watching this on the day of the release of the video, it is also release day for the game itself at Salute in the UK. A few weeks ago, Warlord Games very kindly asked me if I'd like to get involved in painting the British Army Tank Force and sent me all the bits well ahead of time. Many of those bits arrived so early that the official box wasn't out, so they sent me all the individual components in their bolt action boxes, and I've already painted the Humber Mark IV. You may have already seen the tutorial for that, but afterwards they've sent me the extra stowage and all of the cards and things as well. I think the only thing I'm missing from the British tank starter force is the tank crew. So with the Humber out of the way, it's time to crack on and build and paint the other four tanks. So tools are ready and there we go all built with a little bit of stowage added to the sides from the starter set miniature realms is proudly sponsored by baron of dice premium wargaming dice over 500 styles over 4,000 customer reviews welcome to the best dice on the planet much of this tutorial will be very familiar to you if you've already watched the tutorial for the Humber. This is a brown surface primer, but I'm not using it because it's a surface primer. I'm just using it because I wanted to give a nice brown undertone to my paint job. It acts as a little bit of a filter coming through underneath the green layers I'm going to add afterwards, which I think really adds to those green layers, makes them a little bit warmer, makes it look like a little bit more of a realistic finish, but also kind of helps with some of the weathering and things later on in the process of course you don't have to do this and you'll notice I'm using an airbrush and if you want to start with just a green rattle can then the later stages you could absolutely follow on in most cases I'm spraying downwards or to the sides on these tanks leaving the black in the recesses and then the undercuts because that will really help with the shadow but I do paint the bottoms of my tanks as well and I want the brown to be on the tracks so I am doing a little bit of work from underneath but I'm trying not to fill in all those gaps I want to leave a little bit of dark Continue this round on the turrets as well, which I've left separate for painting. It definitely makes it an awful lot easier. I am doing a slightly stylized effect where I light the bottoms of the sides of the tanks and the turrets as well a little bit more than the tops. If you do wonder why I'm leaving a slightly darker edge at the top, there's a reason for that. It's not scientific, so to speak. It's just the way I like them to look. You see a little bit more of that here on the sides of the M terminal. I'm just leaving a little bit of dark to the top of that panel. And I do the same as I fill in the rest of the tank as well, occasionally leaving some of the dark area towards the top on the side areas. On the top itself, I tend to try and do it panel by panel and leave a little bit of the black showing. Again, this isn't a full modulation effect, but it definitely leans towards that kind of styling. That may not be for everyone. You may prefer to do more of an all over coat of the brown. And these are the core two colors, both model color, bronze green and Russian uniform. What I'm doing here is slowly building up first the darker bronze green over the brown. I'm pretty much following where the brown has gone. I'm trying to leave a little bit of the brown in some places, but I'm not too worried. And it's that brown showing through this thinned paint. It's about 50-50 with thinner in the airbrush. It just gives it a slightly warmer tone. I think really makes it react with the Russian uniform even better. Following the same method on the other areas, of course, these are the tops of the turrets where there's a lot more brown showing. I can leave a little bit of brown in the recesses. It does help with the weathering later on, but it really just helps this green go on and gives it a better effect. I'm taking a little bit of care here and trying to make sure I don't get too much green onto the tracks or onto the, the stowage that are on there as well. I find the brown gives a, a nicer base layer to work from, but it doesn't really matter. You can touch it up very easily. Now, the tracks, a lot of it depends on how you want to paint them. I quite often like to leave them as a black or a brownish color and do some dry brushing. So what I'm doing here is just trying to catch the, the road wheels and all of the mounts around the outside and leaving that main brown area on the bottoms and on the sides of the tracks itself I can always touch it up if I need to but because we're going to weather these using a lot of oil washes and those kind of things you find you really don't need to do too much if you're careful at this stage now we move on to that Russian uniform which is a, a much brighter green and it starts to make it look like that sort of late war British color that you'd expect 
So I am being a little bit more careful here, just trying to make sure they leave some of the previous stages showing through. So with this Russian uniform layer, which is this lighter green, I'm just trying to spray in the panels here so I've got that sort of natural shadow around the edges and trying to leave some of those darker areas where they are just to reinforce it, give some variation and some transition. You see that again here with the turret and I'm aiming towards the bottom, which is the, the weird upside down kind of highlighting that I want to do on the sides there. And then when I get to the top, I'm focusing in the center of those hatches and around the edge, just leaving a little bit of the brown and the other green showing through. And at the end, it just really, really has a nice effect. So move on to the M10 here, you can see that even clearer with these sharper edges making it easier to hit those lower parts. And again, just trying to miss out that baggage or that stowage as, as much as I can. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit of overspray, but it's a lot easier just to touch up with a bit of brown afterwards. And for the turret of the M10, I've been using the, the same colour on the crew. So Russian uniform would be the, the colour of the, the helmets anyway, or the colour if you're using model colour and the same recipe as I am. The, the uniform itself would be a different colour, but it's hardly any of it showing. So I've just left it in the, the darker bronze green. Now moving on to Iraqi sand, also from model colour. I've got a little bit of this on my wet palette, thinned it with water, almost 50-50. And first of all, I'm just highlighting in and filling in the baggage, the stowage on the sides. Now this may well have been a khaki-ish green. I've decided to go down this route, just makes it stand out from the, the side of the tanks a little bit more, gives it a little bit more interest. I'm also using it to, to base colour all the little wooden areas, so the handles of the tools and things that are on the side of the tank. And the reason for that, will come up shortly. I don't like painting my lights in yellow or bluish or something so I'm just putting some little hash marks of the same Iraqi sand here and we'll dull that down later. And I'm also using the same Iraqi sand just to paint in flat on the skin areas of the crew so that I can use some contrast style paints for their skin later on as well. Here I'm using a contrast paint black Templar but any black will do really I just like it because it flows really nicely and I'm just picking out some of the black areas that are on the sides of the tank. It's usually tools or these chains and things that are at the side or this cable rather at the side. And it's just fine that it's really smooth and quite easy to draw a nice neat line around the edge. It's perfect on these shovel heads as well. Now for some more contrast, and this is Skeleton Horde. I've just thinned this ever so slightly, just adding a touch of water, and I'm using it a little bit like a, an overall glaze, or even half a wash, I suppose, here, all over the baggage or the stowage. And now we have Army Painter Speed Paint Hardened Leather. And I'm going to use this on all the wooden areas, and that will go perfectly over that Iraqi sand, meaning you've got a shadow built in there and a highlight already just with the one coat. Now this is a soft 6B pencil. I'm going to use this to highlight the metal areas. I don't want them to look too shiny. This is one way of doing it. So I'm just literally running it around the edge of this cable and the texture is just picking out all of the bits we need. Using the same on the machine gun on the back of the M10 turret here as well. The last thing you want to do is make it look like a nice shiny metallic weapon when it's blued steel. And this is Vallejo Express Colour Dwarf Skin, and I'm just using that directly over the Iraqi sand that I placed on all of the flesh areas, the hands and their faces, and that's all you need. They're barely showing in that turret, and that's just perfect. With all the base colours down, it's time to apply a gloss varnish in order to protect the miniature before we add lots of oil paints for weathering. But more importantly, for the next instance, we're going to be adding some decals. Decals really want a nice smooth surface so they can adhere to really well and also blend into the surface better. If you go over a more porous matte surface, you don't get quite the same effect. Now it's not always possible to make your tanks all aligned in terms of decals to make sure that the, the right regiments have the right labels on for all the campaigns. It depends on what games you're playing, but I wanted to see if I can make the match looking at the things that were provided. And this is a late war post D-Day force. So I was able to choose the 6th Guards Armour Brigade and they had decals for that. You're looking at the Coldstream Guards, the 4th Tank Battalion, that's represented by the 153 decals and also the 11th Armoured Division. And then we're looking at this 75th anti-tank regiment as well 
So starting with the 75th Anti-Tank Regiment and this M10 here, I'm just going to briefly go through how I apply decals. I did in the previous video, and I do have a full tutorial for this. I will try to remember to pop a link in, but this should give you the basics. Using Microset and Microsol. Microset first, then you apply your decals, which you'll see that I have here on my wet palette. You can just use a saucer of water if you do that pop a bit of kitchen roll and stop some floating around. I'm using the end of a scalpel blade. I've got it turned the other way around so it's not the sharp side to get it into position. And then a cotton bud, we call it in the UK, and they call it a Q-tip, I believe, in the, in the US. Take away the excess moisture so it's not floating around anymore. And then you get the micro sole and put that over the top. And this kind of dissolves the edges of it, blends it into the tank. And that's why you want a, a nice shiny gloss surface to work from. And once that's on, work around to the next one. Now these will take a little while to fully set and dry. So be careful you don't take it back off with your thumb or finger or something. I know I've done it plenty of times. And there we go, have the 11th Armoured Division decal going on there as well. Now, I think these are in the right places. I do a little bit of research, but I'm not a super expert. I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments if they're not the right ones. But I think from my quick research, they are right. As I said, if you want some more help with decals, um, look out for my full tutorial on it. I'll, as I said, I'll try and remember to put a link in. If not, let me know in the comments and I will direct you to it. Now, once those decals are fully dry, you want to seal them again. Now, I'm just applying a little bit of gloss varnish with a brush directly over the top. They're very few decals on World War II miniatures, and they're usually pretty small. Um, if you've got a lot of decals, you might want to get the airbrush out to apply a thin layer of gloss varnish. If you don't apply it, they can fake off quite easily. It's also nice to flake them off sometimes. Before you apply the gloss, you can scratch them away with a toothpick or something, make it look like they're chipped away. But just a thin layer, and you're done. These are ready mixed oil washes from Scale Color or Scale 75, Grease and Dark Mud. Grease is a kind of a sepia tone, Dark Mud is a kind of a mid brown tone and we're just using a bit of a mix. So mostly grease, I'm just applying it around areas where the dirt would gather. So anywhere that there's sort of studs or in between panels of armor, anywhere there's a rivet or something like that, just apply it and let it wash around, mainly leaving it off the flatter surfaces. Now the the beauty of oils is you can wash them off afterwards or you can wipe them away afterwards. Take a long time to fully set. And even when they seem fully dry, you can reactivate them with some artist white spirit and clean them away. Whereas if you use a sort of standardized wash or you're used to Aurac Thurshade or something like that, you've got to put it in the place you want it straight away. Or Because once it's dry, that's it. It's, it's stained there. So I, you can be a little bit loose and liberal here. I sometimes do a method where I pretty much cover the whole tank um, and then just clean away from the flat surfaces afterwards. You can buff it off. There's all kinds of things you can do. And maybe I'll do a, a further video on different weathering methods using oils in the future. But right now, as I said, I'm just sticking to all the crevices and things. Now, not only will it shade, but it will also add an area that looks a little bit like dry sort of dust and dirt and deposits as well. So it shades and also weathers at the same time. So I'm just moving on to the, the darker colour here as well, focusing that around the wheels because that's where your mud build up would be. But I'm also going to add a little bit of that to the main body of the tank. And you'll see some vertical lines already. And what I like to do is do a few vertical lines, little stripes down the side. They look a bit odd now, but when I go back and clean it up afterwards, I will blend them in and thin them out. And then what you end up with is it looks like dirt streaks or, or, or water streaks. And maybe it's rained and that's the deposits that are left afterwards. Now, I love doing these stages. I find it really, really fun. You, you can't really make any mistakes. Well, you can, but you can clean them up afterwards. And you're just almost sloshing it over the whole of these, these hatches here. You can see it just runs immediately into all those recesses. Oil paints naturally do run into the recesses and, and not on the flat surfaces. And also that the gloss finish that we applied, not only to protect the decals, but to protect the paintwork for this stage helps this as well. It helps the oils flow into those recesses and, and not remain on the flat surfaces. So this does take a little bit of time to work your way around. And, and if you're like me and you get a little bit bored halfway through, you can really start sloshing it on. But like I said earlier, it's so easy to clean up and you'll see that in the next stage. And for the next stage, I'm using some Artist White Spirit. You can also use something called Sansador. They are a little bit milder than the stuff you can buy in your homeware stores, in your B&Q or your home base if you're in the UK. It's a little bit less smelly. You'll get in less trouble with your significant others and your family and your pets and, and things like that if you're using this stuff. So I do recommend it. Also, it's just not as harsh on, on your paintwork. So 
just a, you can see I've got it in the cap here, just a little bit of clean white spirit. And just off camera is a clean paper towel. I'm just dipping my brush in and then streaking down and thinning out those lines that I've put in, blending them in, making sure they don't look like big, thick paint marks, but just where the water has run down. And you get this really, really nice effect when it dries. So on the flatter surfaces at the top of the tank, you really can just sort of almost rub out or wipe away from those flat areas, leaving it just round the edges of, of all those recessed areas or the, or the raised areas. And you just leave the dirt deposits. And it, as I said earlier on, it gives you that shadow effect, but it also gives you that sort of dirty, grimy effect. Same with the panels on the sides of the Churchills as well. I'm just making sure that I'm focusing on those sort of flat areas in the middle and just leaving it in all those gaps and it really, really makes the vehicle pop. And once that is fully dry, and it can take 24 hours to fully dry, you can always use a hairdryer, but be careful with plastics, you don't melt them. I'm giving it a coat of matte varnish. You want to dull down all of that gloss varnish that you apply to the tank. You don't want it to look shiny and it really just ties it all together and really makes it look cool. And there we have it with the matte varnish all dry. You can see the difference it makes with it all matted down. And then we're ready for that next stage, which is Game Air Silver. And that next stage is a little bit of a really light, subtle dry brush on some edges in some areas. You don't want to go all over. The paint is not wearing off these things like a, a 40k tank. This is very much a case of where the, the paint may have worn off. Maybe it's gone up against a wall or something like that. Maybe it's ricochets from ammunition or bullets or something. And, and maybe it's a little bit more worn than it would actually be. But I definitely think it adds to the definition. It's a really, really interesting and an easy way of achieving that now you can absolutely leave this stage if it's not to your taste some people will go along and do an edge highlight with a lighter green or something like that instead i just prefer to to do this i think it works really really nicely after the weathering stage i think it works particularly nicely when you've got a, a really textured edge like you have on the churchills here with lots of rivets and bolts and things and, and lots of different lines so just that really really subtle amount there just adds that little bit of extra interest but it's up to you we're getting quite close to the end now this is rhinox hide but any kind of warmish brown will do and i'm just doing a tiny bit of sponge chipping here all over the tanks now this could be anything you want it could be mud it could be where paint is chipped off and it's dark underneath it just looks good and i like to do it you also find that if any of the decals are looking a little bit too bright or anything just the odd little chip a little brown dot in the middle of them makes it look like that they're kind of part of the paintwork rather than a sticker that's applied to the top this is light sienna vallejo pigment again i'm just brushing this in dry the whole idea of this tutorial is is doing some military modeling style effects but doing them pretty quick really and getting them ready for the tabletop if you brush this into detail um it stays there i blow off the excess afterwards and it just kind of leaves a residual stain there and looks dry and dusty you could achieve this with dirt and dust deposit effects i have lots of those as well but again you have to go through that same process with the artist white spirit and letting them dry now we move on to some mud. This is European mud from Vallejo. Lovely effect. I use it all the time in my tutorials. I use it on so many of my miniatures. And here I'm just stippling it on and probably using it as it's designed more than, than some of the times I, I do use it. And you can go as, as thick and as muddy as you want. So it's really up to you here. But I like it to, to really kind of make the tank look like it's been caught in action. Exactly the same method with the Churchills. I find it's probably easier to go in a little bit light to start with and build up. But as I said earlier, you can just go in with as heavy as you like and have some fun here. And that's it. There we have it. It takes a little while for the mud to dry. So you want to do that before you start moving them around and touching them too much. Add the humber to them and, and that's the whole British force done. I absolutely love painting tanks and uh, we'll probably look to add to these, maybe even expand these into a bolt action force and do some British infantry, which I've not done in 28 millimeter before, but these were so much fun. And thank you Warlord Games for, for sending them out to me. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video and maybe found some of the techniques that I've used. They're useful. Um, if you don't do it that way, let me know in the comments what methods and techniques you use for your tanks. I'm always interested to hear how other people paint. 
If you haven't taken a look at Octum Panzer yet, it's definitely worth having a look. It's it's very much a granular game, so it's quite detailed, but you don't need many tanks on the table. So it's almost a skirmish game for tanks. Um, I think you can play quite a big game, up to eight tanks aside, and still get it in, in two hours. It's perfect for a club night. There's a campaign system. And it's great if you want to try out World War II, but don't fancy painting lots of infantry. The infantry is just not needed for the game, but they are represented if you want to have a few on the table through some assets but you don't need to represent them at all but if you do have some for bolt action or something you could put them on as well they're just really fun to uh add to that table for that little bit of extra flavor and the assets are cool that way so you know think about things like bringing up the pit the game allows quite a lot of personality to your tanks, whether it's your, your own characters and things or historical characters that are featured in the game, which I think is a really nice touch, a bit like Blood Red Skies in some ways. You also got quite a lot of choice in how you select your tanks and how good they are and how good your crews are. So you can have a, a veteran gunner, but maybe only a green driver or something like that. So whatever suits your style of play or the campaign that you're doing. So it's it's quite fun and realistic with these special event cards. It's just really worth taking a look at. Now, I think once you've got the core rules down, um, you can whiz through the games quite quickly. So if you haven't already, go and check it out. I'll definitely be looking forward to playing some games and and, and getting these tanks on the table. If you are new to the channel and you've not seen my videos before and you've been attracted because of this new game, please do check out the other videos. There's a whole host of different topics on there. There are some other World War II things as well with, with bolt action and some Flames of War. And I also cover a lot of other game systems, an awful lot of Warhammer, the old world, which you'll notice if you're flicking through my videos, but lots and lots of things, including Napoleonics, and I pretty much cover anything I'm interested in at the time with a heavy focus on painting tutorials. I have a Discord for the channel, which is a really, really friendly place, and there's a link to that in the video description if you fancy joining. And if you do fancy supporting the channel further, I do have a Patreon, which includes many different tiers with the top tiers, including painting tuition. The bottom one is very much just to support the channel. The links for all of those are in the video description as well. And if you fancy buying this game, there is an affiliate link for Warlord Games in that same video description as well. So go and check that out. It's a really good way of giving me a tiny little bit of a kickback for it. But most importantly, if you've enjoyed the video, just giving us a like and comment in. I'm very, very appreciative of that. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you soon.